Welcome to this demonstration on how to migrate seamlessly VMware NSX deployments to Red Hat OpenShift Virtualization thanks to F5 Distributed Cloud. This use case is for customers that want to migrate their VMware deployments to non proprietary virtualization infrastructure. Migrating away from VMware with NSX is very challenging because these migrations are very disruptive. The solution that we are presenting consists in replacing the VMware vSphere hypervisor with Red Hat's OpenShift virtualization open source software. The networking component to be replaced is NSX, and we are not assuming any specific load balancer used. As replacement, we will use F5 Distributed Cloud for both networking and as a load balancer. Finally, we will leverage Red Hat's migration toolkit for virtualization to migrate the workload VMs from vSphere to OpenShift. Let's take a look to the overall solution. OpenShift provides hypervisor and VM management, and also layer two networking, including overlays and micro segmentation. Routing, layer three firewalling, layer seven load balancing, and other NSX-like functionalities are provided by FI Distributed Cloud. FI Distributed Cloud additionally provides functionalities such as enhanced application layer security, DDoS defense, and a hybrid networking model, amongst others. This is the overall network setup of the demo. First, it is shown a typical NSX two tier deployment with a tier zero gateway and two tier one gateways where the VMs are hosted in the VMware hypervisor. The NSX deployment will eventually be replaced by F5 distributed cloud. We will deploy in parallel an XCCE site for each tier one gateway and this will be hosted in OpenSea virtualization. Note that we don't need a component for replacing the tier zero gateway, as its functionality is bundled in the XCC sites, effectively flattening the NSX two tier topology in a single tier. This is transparent to the VMs. We call these tier one gateways and the replacement XCC sites left and right. It is not casual that the networks in both VMware and XC have the same color. This is because the same networks will be hosted in both deployment concurrently using the same IP addresses. In fact, FI Distributed Cloud will allow VMs of a given network or even a VIP coexist in both deployments simultaneously. In our network setup, we also include an external client to demonstrate external connectivity. Next, let's see the view of the setup from the load balancing point of view. The NSX deployment surely will have already a load balancer. This could be Big IP, Nginx, NSX load balancer, AVI, anything really. Initially, migrating such a scenario would be very disruptive because any load balancer in the market other than FI distributed cloud doesn't allow clients and servers to be in both NSX and the migrated deployment concurrently while using the same IP address in both. This means that using any load balancer other than FI distributed cloud will require whole networks to be migrated before being operative. This implies a very long and risky service disruption. We are talking about hours in the best case. Service continuity is the challenge of NSX customers that want to migrate away from it. In this demo, we will show a stage approach which allows the incremental relocation of VMs while keeping all capacity available at all times. This stage migration approach has two main stages. The first stage is replacing the existing VIPs in NSX with VIPs implemented by the F5 XCC components. The second stage is the migration of the VMs from VMware to OpenShift. By using XCC, this can be done incrementally, having VMs in both deployments concurrently without service disruption or loss of capacity. In other words, Regardless in which deployment are the clients, this will be able to access the VIP, which will be served by servers in both VMware and OpenShift deployments, as shown in the animation. Overall, this stage approach avoids all or nothing style migrations. Let's review in more detail the advantages of migrating using a phased approach. Replacing a VIP from the previous load balancer to XCCE, that is stage one, is low risk, because this stage can be performed gradually in a per-VIP basis. Also, 
A pre-production VIP can be configured to validate load balancing prior switching the production VIP. It also allows validating the load balancing while running in the VMware deployment. And overall, this stage is needed to decrease the migration of the VMs in the next stage. Once the previous load balancer is migrated to XCC, that is stage two, it is possible that both VMware and OPC deployments coexist while keeping original addresses. This also allows migrating the VMs incrementally during several maintenance windows. VM migration and rollback is straightforward, not requiring network reconfiguration. Also, there is no service disruption or loss of availability even during VM migrations. And finally, there is no loss of capacity during migration because all servers are available. Next, we are going to see the NSX deployment through NSX Manager using the topology view. We can see the tier 0 gateway and the two tier 1 gateways left and right, and the client, server, and VIP segments in each tier 1. The CE will be additionally connected through an outside segment. This additional segment allows the CE to keep external connectivity after we migrate the workload segments to the XE deployment. Now we are going to see the different CEs in the XE console. We can observe the CEs acting as load balancers in the VMware NSX deployment and the CEs in OpenShift that will replace NSX. Please note the names chosen for the CEs. The NSX and the XE CEs have the same base name, but the CEs in NSX have the suffix original. This is a way of referring to these as the ones going to be replaced by the CEs in OpenShift. Next, we are going to see the different VMs in the hypervisors. The first view is in the VMware vCenter, and we can see both left and right CEs, and also the client and server VMs, where the running VMs are the VMs not yet migrated to OpenShift, and the stop VMs are the VMs already migrated. Keeping all the VMs images available in both hypervisors is just a way to speed up the demo. In the OpenShift console, we will also see the CEs running. Note that the workload VMs running in VMware are not the ones running OpenShift and vice versa. In the case of OpenShift, each tier one and all its associated VMs will be created in a separate namespace to facilitate multi-tenancy. We will briefly check the workload VMs in their different hypervisors, validating that the IP configuration shown is the one of the previous diagram. Let's see how all this works. We start showing the traffic flows from clients that are in VMware. These non-migrated clients will be able to reach servers in both VMware and OpenShift thanks to distributed cloud capabilities. This means that while doing the migration, we keep all workload capacity of both VMware and OpenShift. Next, we will see the life of a packet in this case. We start with the client sending a packet to the VIP. These packets will be shown as red. This will reach the local CE from where the packet will be sent to wherever the server is. First, it is shown in the case the server is within NSX, where the packet is encapsulated. This is shown as a closed box then finally delivered and encapsulated to the server, shown as an open box. Also shown is when the server is not within NSX, in which case the packet is sent to the remote CE, also encapsulated, then the encapsulated to the server. Overall, this encapsulation allows to keep the addressing in both NSX and XE transparently without requiring to do any change in the routing of the infrastructure. The traffic flows from clients in OpenShift that is, in clients that have been migrated is analogous to what we just saw. The packet is always sent and encapsulated to the local VIP, then encapsulated to the CE where the server is, and finally de-encapsulated for its delivery to the server. This happens regardless the server is in the OpenShift or in the VMware deployment. Note again that the packets without encapsulation are shown as open boxes and the encapsulated packets are shown as closed boxes. Next, we are going to show how all these flows can happen simultaneously. At the bottom of the screen, it is being shown the logs from both servers, 
where at the moment only the health checks from XE are received. Then we start sending traffic from the client in VMware with IP address ending with .30. And we can see how this IP address is reflected in the logs of both servers. Finally, we start sending traffic from the client in OpenShift as well with IP address ending with .31. And we can see how this IP address is reflected in the logs of both servers as well. Next, we are going to see how these two deployments interoperate with the other enterprise networks while having the same IP addressing in both. Both NSX and XE deployments will advertise the networks using BGP. By default, the upstream routers will have a higher preference to NSX routes. This means that the networks in NSX will be routable to the outside and that the VMs in the XE deployment can only reach outside if it's not it. In this slide, we are going to show the case where we have migrated all the networks, but not yet the VIP network. The traffic flow is very similar as previously. The external client will send the traffic normally, reaching the CE in the NSX deployment by default. There, the packets will get encapsulated and sent to the CE where the servers are active, which is the XE deployment. There, the traffic is de-encapsulated and sent to the servers. The only step remaining in this migration journey is to migrate the network prefixes, including the BIP network. This is accomplished by just stopping advertising the networks in NSX, which is done by detaching the NSX segment to its tier 1 gateway. Once NSX stops this advertisement, the upstream router will choose reaching the network through XE, becoming fully routable from the outside. The traffic path for the external client will change and now the request will be sent to the VIP in the XE deployment. From there, it will be encapsulated to the CE where the servers are. Finally, it will be delivered to the server de-encapsulated. Let's check how seamless this transition of prefixes is. In the top of the screen, we can see the same servers with the same IPs in both VMware and OpenShift deployments. The ones in the VMware deployment are unavailable because these have been migrated. As expected, the servers available are the ones in the OpenShift deployment. In the bottom left of the screen, we can see requests being served by both servers, and in the bottom right, we can see the path of the packets from the external client to the VIP. Highlighted, we can see the two additional hops of NSX Tier 0 and Tier 1 gateways prior to migration. Then. When the routes stop being advertised by NSX, the path is reduced from 5 hops to 3 hops. Note that during the change, no service disruption occurs. And with this, we finish the demonstration. Finally, we would like to highlight some key takeaways from this solution. F5 and Red Hat have a long-standing joint alliance with certified solutions and satisfied customers. Red Hat on OpenShift simplifies the management of containers and VMs via a single pane of glass. F5 Distributed Cloud and OpenShift Virtualization allows replacing VMware and NSX. XE additionally provides application network security and a hybrid cloud model. Overall, the solution proposed allows coexistence of both deployments and a gradual migration without service disruption or reduction of capacity. With this, we finish this video that we hope you have enjoyed. Thanks for your attention.